Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mechanical Engineering. In this video, we will be talking about an exercise where we apply the principle of virtual work and the Lagrange equations. We will not be doing a whole derivation, so this is just an application video. Let's jump right in. We will be focusing on this system. So we have a square that is moving on a plane and a pendulum attached with a point mass at the end. Just a small recap how we apply the principle of virtual work. First, we get the masses and their positions, then their absolute velocities, and then their absolute accelerations. We get all the forces that are acting on that point mass, and we project them with uh, the directions that are compatible with our constraints. And we get those by first getting the positions of our point mass and then deriving it with Q and Q are our generalized coordinates. We can do this first by getting the forces and then at the second place we get our positions or we can do our positions first, do that at one, and then do our forces because A transpose B is the same as B transpose A. And we call those directions that we get a that will be a matrix, we call this one the Jacobi matrix. So that's why if you have a, or if you see a J, that's our directions compatible with our constraints. Let's jump right in into our system. Let's get rid of that. So first of all, we have to see how many generalized coordinates do we have. We are now in 2D, so we get 2 times n minus r. R is our, our, our constraints and n is the numbers of body, bodies. So we have two bodies, we have mass one and mass two, and we have two constraints. The two constraints are first that mass one can only move along the horizontal axis, and the constraint number two is that this direction, uh, this length has to be constant. So we are left with non-capital capital M, so just a lowercase n uh, is two. So we have two generalized coordinates. In this case, we have the dis displacement x, and let me get rid of this, and our angle theta. There we go. All right, so we, now we have to do, or basically just follow our recipe. First, we get the position of mass one. That is just x. We derive it. We get a x dot, we derive it again. So here we have the velocity and here we have the accelerations and we're done with our uh, accelerations that we need for body one. Then we look at the forces. We have two kinds of forces. First of all, we have the spring that is acting on mass one and then we have our gravitational, uh, gravita gravitational acceleration. Our coordinate system looks like this. So we have x and y. So in the x directions, we have a spring that is pulling us back and the gravity that is pulling us down. Now we have to get the Jacobi matrix. So we first look at our position and derive it with our first generalized coordinate. So that's x. So we get x derived by x is 1 and 0 der derived by x is 0. We do the same thing for theta and we get 0, 0. So now we already done for mass one. Now we just have to do a simple matrix multiplication where we just plug in the numbers and we get our equation of motion for this particular mass that is not valid right away because we have to take in the sum and then set it to zero and this will be our principle of virtual work. For mass two, we have to do a little bit of math. So first we get the positions. So if we zoom back in, we have, this is our x, but now we have another x. This will be the cosine and this will be the sine. So we have our position x plus sine because we move further and a minus cosine that we move in the negative direction. Then we do a derivation, a time derivative. So the absolute velocity and we do another derivative and get the absolute acceleration. From that, we just have to apply, uh, find the forces. In this case, 
we only have gravity because we do not consider reaction forces. This is the magic in the principle of virtual work that we can just ignore the reaction forces because the directions that we get, or the better to say the directions where we project into, are orthogonal to the reaction forces. And we have a vector and a vector orthogonal to the first vector. After a scalar product, it will be zero. So now we have to get the Jacobian matrix. We first, again, look at our position, derive it with x, we get the same as before, and derive it with theta, and we get cosine and sine. So again, plucking in the numbers is a little bit, or not a little bit, but significant effort, and we get this big equation. I see that I forgot a multiplied by mass 2 here. Because we have a lot of sine and cosine here, we can do a significant simplification. So we have this one and this one. We have a cosine squared and a sine squared, and this will equal to 1. And we have a minus cosine sine plus cosine sine, so this will cancel out. And these two will equal to 1. And we get these, uh, this equation of motion for our second mass. And now we have again to uh, combine them or, or add them both together to get the principle of virtual work. So we do equation for body one and equation for body two. We just sum them up and we get our two equations of motion for a two mass system that has two degrees of freedom. So this is our equation one and this is our equation two. You see, this is a very, very simple approach but that has a significant advantage that we don't have to consider the reaction forces. But you see that we have to do a lot of work to get to our equations of motion. That's where the Lagrange equations come into play. They do the exact same thing, but we don't look at it from a Newtonian perspective, but more from a energetic perspective. So here again, just a small recap, we have our Lagrange equations. We have the absolute or the time derivative of dt dq dot, so a partial de derivative with our ge generalized coordinates, minus dt dq plus our dv dq, this transposed, and we get our non-conservative forces. In this case, we have no non-conservative forces. Non-conservative forces would be like forces applied to the system that are not reaction forces, or maybe viscous dampers, dampeners, sorry. So T is our kinetic energy. And we know from high school that the kinetic energy is an one, one over two mass times velocity. And in our case, velocity is U dot. So we do that for body one. And again, of course, we have to add all the kinetic energy from all, from the whole system. So we do it for body one. We do one and a half times m times x dot because mass can only move, mass one can only move in the x direction. For body two, we have to put in u transpose u dot to transpose u dot. So we have to get our u dot from our u. So we do a time derivative and we get this equation. If we add those together, we get our total kinetic energy of the system will be this lengthy expression. Now we have to do the potential energy. The potential energy is V. The potential can come from two places. First of all, springs, and second, uh, the height, so gravity. So this is our potential energy for the spring. If we move further away from the wall, we will have more potential energy. That's for mass one and for mass two, that if this angle increases, we have more potential energy. So this angle increases, cosine will go down because we have a negative sign, we will get up. So the potential energy increases. Add those together and we get our potential energy. Now we again have to just, just do simple derivatives. So partial derivative with q dot of the kinetic energy, derive it in this line with d 
uh, sorry, I think that's x. And then this line we derive with our theta. So this we will get this one after we, we derive with q dot. And then we do a time derivative and get this equation. If we derive with just our q's, we the kinetic energy with just our q's, we get this one. And deriving our potential energy first with x in this case, and then with theta in the second line, we will, we will get this one. And now we just have to do basically a summation of those parts. So we add part one, part two, and part three, and we get the exact same equations that we did beforehand. But this time we skipped all the cosine and sine and additions that we had to do before. I would say the most, most difficult part is to do the time derivative. If we have those equations of motion, we can also put them in a special matrix form where we have our Q double dots here and some terms on the other side that will be useful for our later exercise. But I hope you could understand the whole principle of virtual work and the Lagrange equations that in virtual work, we project our equations that are compatible with our constraints. So we get rid of the reaction forces in the Lagrange equations. We look at it from a energetic perspective that we get the kinetic energy and the potential energy, and then just do simple derivations and add everything back together and get the exact same equations that we had with the principle of virtual work just faster. I hope this video gave you a better understanding of the principle of virtual work and the Lagrange equations. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next video.